I remember when Nodi and I worked together. Oh, we'd seen some stark and stormy weather. People trying to tickle like a sword is a feather and Nodi giving them hell for leather. Which is why when asked to speak, I felt it an honor unique and spent the rest of the week planning how not to come across like some freak. Would you believe I believed what would work best was to give aimless rambling a rest and that the way to not end up all silly and jest was to put on my rhyming vest. It's a thing I like to do, have unleashed in a blog or two, my parsha for seeing where the word takes me to in somehow a more concise way to communicate with you. So, be grateful I'm not a lesbian, otherwise I'm clear that standing up here all my talk would be the fear that your sexuality could cost you dear. By cost you dear, I mean cost you your life. You are aware so-called corrective rape is rife. Murder etched on gun and bludgeon and knife, though the constitution speaks of wife and wife. On occasions like these, this film festival, we know its value is inestimable. So not mentioning it would anyway be questionable regarding something in our country so detestable. Certainly, this is not the only, but rather critical challenge threatening the social and political. And by no means exclusive to us, stated as rhetorical, the manifestation of violent homophobia is diabolical. If you are fortunate enough to swim further upstream, it's possible to be reaching for the South African dream whilst elsewhere milk is wanted, you're having cream, in full knowledge that things are not what they seem. Even with eyes turned to the West, you won't be coming off best. Take, for example, the Canadian case, assaulted, paralyzed. The reaction, almost commonplace. In Europe, look at France, the city of love, taking an ugly stance. And Russia, at a glance, giving mindless macho another chance. We could ride this beast into the Middle East. And we'd have much on which to feast, and yet know of actual details, the least. And whilst also down under, the ogre roars, it's in Africa that the evil most abhors, where the killing fields stretch from inland to shores and dread accompanies the opening of doors. And yet so, the subtle, the sneaky, the fine, that constantly seeks your existence to undermine, challenges a constant snaking line so that living becomes how you your life define. So is this just about being gay? And why is this issue identified as LGBTI? After all, if lack of freedom and rights we decry, must we be the victims are like you and I? Kofi Annan told the UN, it's about human rights. And this has been agreed on by leading lights. And let me reiterate about Tutu's heaven. I take it any day over the other seven. And the point stands that this is not a gay issue, no. This is where we as humans go. And as our history so clearly show, collectively we need to grow. So this festival, with its creative delights, will hopefully, along with the converted and the knights, also attract those who find them extraordinary sights, the proverbial deer in the headlights. For prejudice is ignorance realized. Of little help, I know, to the damaged and the traumatized. And where your brother or sister is victimized, it's right that the expression thereof is criminalized. But we are being foolhardy if we think change will happen in a blink or without the link of all 
our hands in the sink. Let me finally say that in the most marvelous way, the resurgence of this threatened festival today evidences what commitment and big picture thinking can sway.